video is part four of my video series designed to help you get ready for organic chemistry. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the topic of formal charge, which is something that you learned in general chemistry right around the same time as you were learning how to draw Lewis structures. I want to start by reminding you of the equation that we use to calculate the formal charge. Formal charge is a number that we assign to an atom in a molecule, and it is calculated by taking that atom's number of valence electrons, subtracting the number of bonds that are around that atom in the molecule, and also subtracting the number of non-bonding electrons around that atom. I do want to point out two things before we move on. Number one, there are at least two different versions of this equation, so you may have learned a formal charge equation that looks a little bit different than this one, and that's totally fine. They both, uh, whichever equation you're using, we're going to end up getting the same number for formal charge charge. Second thing I want to point out in this particular equation right here, when we're subtracting the number of bonds, obviously a single bond counts as one bond. If the molecule or if the atom has a double bond around it, that's going to count as two bonds. And if there's a triple bond, that's going to count as three. And then also in this equation, we are adding up the total number of non-bonding individual electrons, not lone pairs of electrons. So this particular version of the equation uses individual non-bonding electrons. The other version of this equation uses lone pairs or another version uses lone pairs. Okay, so a couple of videos ago, I showed you common bonding patterns for the five atoms that we most frequently see in organic molecules. And I drew up all of the different options for the common bonding patterns for these different atoms. And in all of these common bonding patterns, all of these atoms have a formal charge of zero, which is why they are the common bonding patterns. When an atom has a formal charge of zero, it is in its ideal bonding environment. So this is like the ideal ideal way that these different atoms could be bonded in organic molecules. And in today's video or in this video, I'm going to be showing you the common bonding patterns for atoms when they have a non-zero formal charge. So we're going to draw a graphic that looks kind of like this, but it's going to be for atoms with non-zero formal charges. So the first thing that I want to do is just refresh, just give us a refresher here of the common bonding patterns when atoms have formal charges of zero. So Starting with carbon, a formal charge of zero means that that carbon atom is going to have four bonds. Nitrogen, formal charge of zero, looks like three bonds and a lone pair. And oxygen, formal charge of zero, looks like two bonds and two lone pairs. And like we talked about in the second video, these four bonds could take a variety of different forms. They could be a double bond with two single bonds. It could be a single with a triple, whatever, as long as there's four bonds. Oxygen could be a double bond with two lone pairs. Again, whatever, as long as there are two bonds and two lone pairs. Um, you may notice that I am leaving hydrogen off of this list and I'm also leaving the halogens off of this list compared to what we did on the second video. The reason that I'm leaving the hydrogen off of this list is because hydrogen atoms always have a formal charge of zero. They never have a non-zero formal charge so we don't need to think about hydrogen atoms when we're thinking about formal charge. I'm leaving halogens off the list because halogens almost always have a formal charge of zero. You are going to see in class a couple of situations where halogens have positive formal charges in molecules, but it's pretty rare, it's pretty uncommon, and I don't think that it's something that you need to be thinking about when all you're doing is trying to get your brains ready for organic chemistry. So we'll leave the halogens off of this list, and then you'll be ready for them when it's time to learn about them in class. So here are the common bonding patterns for carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen when they have formal charges of zero. Now I'm going to draw their common bonding patterns when they have a positive formal charge. For carbon, a positive formal charge comes from having only three bonds, no lone pairs, just three bonds. And to indicate its positive formal charge, we're going to put a plus sign in a circle somewhere near the carbon atom. It doesn't matter where we put it. We just kind of put it wherever it looks pretty. You can stick it wherever you want as long as it's near the carbon atom. Nitrogen with a positive formal charge is going to have four single bond or four bonds, no lone pairs, and oxygen with a positive formal charge will have three bonds and one lone pair. 
And uh, just like I talked about in the second video, we can see any type of variety of bonds in these different situations. So our oxygen atom could have a triple bond with a lone pair, and that would give it a positive formal charge because it still has three bonds. Nitrogen could have a double and two singles, and that would give it a positive formal charge. Carbon could have a triple bond, that would give it a positive formal charge. You get the idea. For negative formal charges, the common bonding patterns for these atoms are, uh, for carbon, that's going to be three bonds and a lone pair. For nitrogen, that's going to be two bonds, two lone pairs. And for oxygen, it will be one bond and one bond and three lone pairs. Now, what you want to be able to do in organic chemistry is look at a molecule. Like we've got some examples of molecules down here. And then really quickly uh, scan that molecule and determine the formal charges on all of the atoms in the molecule just real quick. Now, this is something that we did in Gen Chem. Like in Gen Chem, you would draw Lewis structures and then you would go through your Lewis structure and you would calculate individually calculate the formal charge for every single atom in the molecule. And that was necessary in Gen Chem because we dealt with a wide variety of atoms. Uh, it was much harder to just sort of look at the molecule and, and just know what the formal charges were. We had to do the, do the math on all of them. But in organic chemistry, because we deal with such a small number of atoms, with a small number of options in terms of how they bond, it is a lot easier for us to just very quickly eyeball Lewis structures and determine the formal charges without actually needing to apply the formal charge equation. So what I'm gonna do is show you five examples of how we can really quickly scan a molecule and determine what the formal charges are of all the atoms in the molecule. So starting with this guy right here, if you were asked uh, to calculate the formal charges of every atom in the molecule, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is just ignore the hydrogen atoms in the molecule because remember I told you hydrogen atoms are always gonna have a formal charge of zero, so we don't even need to pay attention to them at all. Get them out of the way, and then you can focus on the carbons, the nitrogens, and the oxygen atoms in the molecule. Now, what you want to be doing initially, what I do initially, is go through the molecule and find all of the atoms that have formal charges of zero. Find all of the atoms that are in that predictable common bonding pattern. For carbon, that means four bonds. So if I go back to this molecule right here, the first carbon atom that I see, it has four bonds, and that means it all also has a formal charge of zero. And that leaves me with this carbon right here, which only has three bonds. So I know that this carbon atom has a non-zero formal charge. My job now is to figure out what that formal charge is. Now, while this is still relatively new, it might be necessary for you to actually go through the process of calculating that atom's formal charge. The number of valence electrons minus the number of bonds around that carbon atom minus the number of non-bonding electrons means that it has a plus one formal charge. And we're gonna indicate that by just writing that positive sign next to the carbon atom. I'm just gonna get rid of all these X's that I drew on here. And there you go. With some time and some practice, you are going to really quickly recognize carbon with three bonds is a positively charged carbon. Let's practice on our second molecule. So again, step number one, we're gonna ignore all of the hydrogen atoms because they always have formal charges of zero. The next thing that we're gonna do is look for atoms that also have a formal charge of zero. Carbon likes to have four bonds. That carbon does have four bonds, so that is a formal charge of zero. The second carbon also has four bonds, so that means it has a formal charge of zero. Oxygen when it has this formal charge of zero, oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs. This oxygen has one, two, three bonds and one lone pair. And while we're still learning this, maybe what we do is calculate the formal charge for oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons. This oxygen has three bonds and it has two non-bonding electrons, which is also a plus one formal charge. And we're just gonna stick that wherever it makes sense. 
Uh, also, if we just took a look at our little reference guide here, we could see that oxygen with three bonds has a positive formal charge. Let's get rid of all these X's. And let's take a look at the next example. So again, we want to ignore our hydrogens. We want to take a look at the non-hydrogen atoms, carbon. This carbon has four bonds, so that means it has a formal charge of zero. This carbon atom has three bonds and a lone pair. Three bonds and a lone pair is a negative formal charge for that carbon. If we wanted to calculate it, it would be valence of four minus three bonds minus two non-bonding electrons, negative one formal charge. Moving on to our next example. Hopefully this is starting to feel okay. We're gonna ignore our hydrogen atoms. They always have formal charges of zero. Take a look at that carbon atom. It has one, two, three, four bonds. That means it also has a formal charge of zero. Take a look at nitrogen. Nitrogen likes to have three bonds and one lone pair. This nitrogen does not have three bonds and one lone pair. It has four bonds which is a positive formal charge there. And if you're wondering like, oh, how am I coming up with this stuff so fast? It's because I've been looking at these six, well, I guess these nine, I've been looking at these nine common bonding patterns for years and years and years and years and years. And I just am at a point where when I see nitrogen with four bonds, my brain immediately knows that's a positively charged nitrogen. So here's our last example. We've got hydrogen atoms that we're gonna ignore. We've got a happy carbon right here with four bonds. We've got another happy carbon right here with four bonds. We've got an oxygen atom that only has one bond and three lone pairs. That makes it a negatively charged oxygen.